I think I'd like to ask you, first of all, uh, if you've gotten into any problems because of your lack of familiarity with the English language. You're just laughing. <laughs> What's happened to you? Well, uh, I found at first that Americans talk too, too quickly. Mm -hmm. And uh, there is uh, such something fun about American language. Um, it, it's only in my mind. I, uh, I heard a boy talking about money, about something he get. And he said, I got 20 bobs. When I was in England, I learned that Bob uh, means policeman. So I was quite surprised to see what, what he was doing with 20 policemen. <laughs> <laughs> well, I find that the Americans talk uh, really much with initials. And I sometimes really get lost because I don't understand what initials are. Well, a TV, I pretty soon I could catch up that it's television, but sometimes you really get lost. We do have that bad habit, I'm yeah, sure. You do. <laughs> How about you, Jayanta? Well, I have no, not experienced any real difficulty, but one of the things that I did uh, come across was that uh, once I was invited to go splunking, and I didn't really know what it meant until I found out later on that it meant cave exploring. <laughs> what about some slang expressions that you can Well, uh, flunk to uh, fail is one of the uh, expressions which I have come across which, were, which was unfamiliar to me. Then also, when you want to say that you are being impudent, you say that he's getting fresh. And then uh, being on the ball is also another unfamiliar expression. Magu, have you had any? Well, my own trouble with the American language is the, is the slang, the slang expression which, uh, which you meet now and then. Uh, it is obviously that the Americans are going to Americanize the English language. For I have never heard such words as Yanks, for example, meaning Americans, guys, meaning men, or old hat, or warmed over cabbage, meaning something old or out of date, uh, particularly new to me. Well, in Israel, when you want to say that it's really out of date, you say, well, you aren't discovering America. America was discovered long ago. Well, that we say in Yugoslavia, the same. For you do? Yes. When you mean that... Well, we mean that uh, something is well known and somebody talks as it's something new. You, you know, we say you are not discovering America. And that's the same way you do well, it in it's, Israel? It's, it's, trendy, it's trendy enough, but it's always the same in Arabic. When you want to say something is <coughs> out of date or, some, or when you hear something which has been told before, you say America has been discovered before. Well, I think we have half an international language, at least international slang. We must ask the other uh, kids in the group if this is true. 33 countries. Yeah, but something it's not true about Ceylon. <laughs> oh, well. Yes. Sorry to in introduce a note of disparity. <laughs> Before we get off the subject of language, we really have to disabuse you, Mirka. The boy didn't say 20 bobs. He said 20 bucks. Bucks. B-U-C-K-S. Oh. Well, I understood it was 20 bobs. <laughs> Let's run. I want to know the languages each of you speak. Now, you sp Magub, you speak English, Arabic, and... Dardi. What's that? Dardi? Well, it, it, How do you it spell is, it? It's a colloquial language. D-A-R-D-O-I. Dardi. D-A-R-D-O-I. Yeah, is it a written language? It is. Does it have much literature? No, no not much, but it has some, some literature. But in school, what do you speak? Arabic. Arabic, always. Yeah. And Daphne, what languages do you speak? Well, I speak English, Hebrew, and a little bit of Arabic, and perhaps a little of French. Is that normal in Israel to learn Arabic? Yes, it's compulsory three years. And apart from that, there are faculties who take only Arabic, Arab, Arab manners, Engl uh, uh, literature, ge geography and history, all just connected with Arab, just whole faculties who take them. And there are quite a few who take it. But Arabic is compulsory for three years in your for school? For three years, it's in my school, I learned it for three years. I don't say what I know now, but at least it's compulsory. <laughs> Have you tried speaking Arabic with any of the students in the forum group from Arab countries? No, I didn't. Think it wasn't too easy, but I, I think, I hope I will be able to. I wonder if any of the neighboring Arab countries, neighboring Israel, have Hebrew as a compulsory language. No, well, that's, I would say, they're really the bad position because they, all the Arab countries ignore Israel and ignore all what is connected with Hebrew and Israel. And that's why they really don't. As we really look forward to peace with them and we want close relationship, we think that even if peace is, we get peace, I mean, what's peace without any common language? I think it will just blow away without uh, doing any good. And that's why we really try to get closer to them. Of course, you have many Arabs in the country, yeah. and that's we want to, to be with them also. Uh, Mirka, you uh, speak uh, Serbo-Croatian and what else? Yes, and English and a little bit of Russian. I learned Russian at school. and For how many years um, did you? 
well, for eight years, but I didn't have a chance to practice it, so I, I read it and I can understand it. Did you obtain a better understanding of the Russian people by reading the Rus reading Russian? Literature? Well, um, through through the books I read from Russian literature, I I get uh, imagination of that, that people. I think that uh, uh, Russians are people who who have a great love to the man, you know, and uh, they are very strong natured people, and they they really know how to sacrifice themselves for for the goal which they have. They showed it through their revolution, through through the war, First World War. This you can also learn by a uh, read by tra translations. But of course, to read their book in its source is the best thing. That's why learning languages is so wonderful, really. You know, the French have a wonderful expression. They say, "Traduire, c'est trahir." To translate is to betray. <laughs> can you think of any uh, proofs in your own languages that are when you translate that you really betray the meaning? Yeah, I think the Quran, our holy, our holy book, in Islam has been translated to English, and when I read the English translation, it is just nothing besides the original Arabic. I mean, it, 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 in Arabic it has just dazzling beauty, and you, it, can, it, it can converse you to Islam, even it is in beautiful language. And when you read it in English, it is just uh, something else distorted. Yes, I mean, sir. The beauty, the beauty of the language is not there at all. Yes, I don't think uh, any translation, however excellent it is, can uh, really capture the spirit of the original form it is written in and uh, it is always better to read the original rather than the translated form. That's making your point that you made at the uh, beginning, that uh, well, well that both of you made yes. at the beginning, that people miss so much if they don't learn another mm -hmm. language. I had a trouble with that translating through, through my, in, from my language in, in uh, English, so it was uh, with borrow and lend. With borrow and, and lend. lend? Yes. Well, what's so we difficult about that? We have only one word for, for borrow and lend. And uh, I asked once, uh, will you borrow me your book? And I didn't know that it's not correct. So they said me that I have to say, uh, may I borrow your book or will you lend me your book? It doesn't seem Something sort of new, silly. you know. <laughs> I, I learn English. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me, is Russian compulsory for eight years for all Yugoslav students? No, no, it's not compulsory. You, you can choose. Uh, in high school, you have to take two languages. And uh, you may choose uh, Russian, French, German, English. In some schools, Italian, but it's very new. So I chose Russian and English. If a student were going to have to choose either Russian or English, suppose he was going to choose Russian, what would be the reasons why he would prefer to study Russian over English in Yugoslavia? Well, it might be that uh, the reason is that um, Russian has much similar, many similarities with our language, and uh, it's easier to learn it. You know, um, it's Slav language as our language is Slav language. So it's in a way easier, in a way very difficult. Uh, could you tell us anything about the percentage of students that will be learning Russian uh, compared to the percentage that are learning English now? Oh, uh, I don't well, know. In your that. school, for example. Well, in my school, uh, we had. Um, um, four classes, uh, four, you, ho you call it homerooms, which uh, learn Russian. And from that, uh, it's about 100 pupils, students. And from that number, half of them, uh, more than half learned in the same time English and the rest French. Mm -hmm. So that you see, a uh, majority learned Russian. Mm -hmm. Uh, tell me, have you had any experience with uh, language teaching in American high schools? You've been in a couple of different high schools now, each of you. Yes, well, I don't really think that we should ignore the Americans. They do also quite a lot in languages. Well, uh, I think I saw that they were learning French, Latin, Spanish, and German. But something very, very strange is that after the second year, about half of the percent uh, just drops, and only half of them go on. Latin, they usually take only for two years, and as I've spoken to them, they say that it just gives them the wonderful basic of English. And then uh, French, they just go on a little bit, j only a few of them, and Spanish, they, Spanish, all their pupils who go on really like it. Well, that's their own taste, but they really like it. 
and they, they say that while, if they'll go to a, to a Spanish-speaking country, they'll be able to pick their language after six months because they had had this basic in school. And I think that's very important because once you have another uh, foreign language, then you can just, you know, you know something different from your own, and then you can just imagine how people in other places just live and, uh, and speak. By the way, what language is the most widely spoken in the world? Well, I think Chinese is the most widely spoken, but uh, uh, because no, there are... I don't say. think so. I think it is English that is most widely spoken. Uh, Perhaps there are the most number of yes, Chinese. Yes, that's exactly. Of course English. Well, there are two things there. English different. is the most widely spoken, oh, but most peop the most more people, people in the world Chinese, speak Chinese course. than any other, about yes. 500,000. What other languages are high up there? Uh, 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 Hindi? Hindi? Hindi, yes. As a matter of fact, I think Hindi and Russian, Thai. Oh, yeah. And then Indonesian. Uh, yeah. What languages do you think our high school students should take, and why? Well, as far as I am concerned, I think that they should take Arabic too, besides. Uh, because Arabic is a rich language, it's uh, deep and expressive and fluent too, and uh, I think it is a beautiful language to speak. And uh, besides, we have our ancient uh, traditional, I mean, culture. Uh, you find the, the Arabic history is more or less its culture history. You find many philosophers and many poets, and they are great, I mean, they are well known, such as Omar al-Khayyam, for example. I have, I have seen more, much more of his work. You know, Martin, excuse me English. for interrupting, but I was just thinking, wonder what the world would be like today if 15 years ago every student in American high schools had been forced to take two or three years of Arabic. Well, you just know as much as I know, and I don't think it would change a lot. <laughs> I, 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 think, I think at least the, the, the problem pointed out just in the, in the opening of the speech is that the uh, American foreign, foreign uh, policy, or I mean the United States Information Service outside is having a problem in the Middle East because only two officials out of 50 speak uh, Arabic. I think if, if, if only 50 years ago that they had been speaking Arabic for three years each in the school, then there would, be, there would be no problem at least. I mean, they will find the Arabic people understanding their foreign policy. Uh, I mean, just in concern of the Middle East question now. Is it true that the most important things about a people and a culture are sometimes those that cannot be translated? Do you think that's yeah. a fair...? It's, it's possible that it is so. Yeah. I mean, there are so many things. Now, for instance, in, in uh, translations, they don't really capture the spirit of some works, that are, which is the most important part 